Hey guys, um, so I'm just going to do a quick review here of Labrus, uh, which is an upcoming uh, initial coin offering. Uh, so Labrus is uh, basically their slogan is uh, democratizing the blockchain. Um, so they're basically bringing bonds to the blockchain. Um, and so if you're not aware of what a bond is, uh, a bond is basically a loan contract. Um, and so I mean, the most probably the most well-known bonds are issued by the government, but they can also also be issued by uh, by companies. Um, and so, a bond is a lot different than a stock. So, a stock represents claim to profits. Um, sometimes it con confers voting rights to people who hold the stock. Um, and stocks vary with uh, you know they're basically based on um, you know expectations of how well. Uh, the firm that you hold the stock in is going to perform. Um, bonds are basically just a contract for repaying a debt, right? So uh, when a bond is issued, um, it's issued for a certain amount. Uh, and so as an investor, you invest that amount uh, and that's that becomes a loan to the company. Um, the bonds also have a coupon. So uh, that's a percentage uh, basically of interest being paid back to the investor. Um, and they have a maturity date. So if a bond's for 10 years, for $2,000 uh, and you know 5% coupon, uh, at the end of 10 years you'll get back to $2,000 and you'll also get 5% uh, interest on the original amount, the $2,000 per year. So this is actually a really interesting idea um, because bonds are traditionally something um, <coughs> that's more kind of a venture capital. Uh, they're more in the realm of venture capital, right? So People, you know, bonds are often issued for a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, five hundred thousand um, dollars, and I mean there are bonds that are issued more for the average person, but uh, it's quite rare. Uh, just bear with me here; my computer's being really slow. Um, all right, so they're they're building a bridge between the blockchain universe and traditional debt markets, um, and so holding a bond is actually is traditionally a really um, it's a really good investment um, because it allows you to basically earn passive income. Um, interest rates aren't, I mean, they're not usually as high as, you know, f higher than 5 or 8%. Um, and if the interest rate's higher on a bond, it generally means it's a riskier, uh, riskier investment. Um, and, and companies can default on bonds, right? And so there's no actual guarantee that you'll get the money back. Um, but bond repayments are issued out before holders of stock. So they're actually in a general sense, they're more stable. Um, they're less risky than holding a, a stock in the same company, basically. Um, and they allow for you to diversify your portfolio, right? So they're not they're not um, affected the same way, you know, with, with fluctuations in value that uh, the stock market is. So, assuming the company doesn't default or go bankrupt, if you have you know a two thousand dollar, hundred thousand uh, dollar bond, that's you know that value remains, right? Um, and you can also sell bonds, so they are liquid. Um, but anyway, enough about bonds. You guys can look up, uh, read more about bonds on your own. Um, but you know, basically, this is this is valuable to uh, cryptocurrency, right? Because you know, if you're someone who's investing in cryptocurrencies, you know, you you buy them, and some of them have utility, some of them have some sort of dividend structure, but a lot of times you're just holding your cryptocurrency in a wallet, right? And in the world today, that's, you know, if you have a whole bunch of cash, you wouldn't just have it sitting in, I mean, it wouldn't be that smart to just have it sitting in a bank account, right? You would invest in something, right? Tax-free savings account or, um, you know, in the stock market and some sort of mutual fund, ETF, those kind of things, right? And so this is what's coming next, I think, um, with crypto is, you know, you hold crypto in your wallet, but you also, you know, Obviously, you want a certain amount that's liquid, but you also want to be able to actually have it doing something, right? Um, and so it's really interesting, you know, creating a platform for um, bonds with cryptocurrencies, right? And um, that's basically what Labris here is trying to do, right? So um, basically, they're raising funds to this ICO to develop a blockchain-based platform um, and to issue bonds and distribute uh, coupon payments to investors, right? So a coupon, as I mentioned, is basically the interest you're getting on the loan you've given uh, as an investor to the bond issuer, the company, or the government. 
Um, so this is being built on the Ethereum network. Um, and <clears throat> there's a lot of advantages, right? So it's going to leverage all the advantages of a blockchain. So increase speed, transparency, and liquidity in the bond transactions. Um, and also protection against loss and diversification, right? So you know, it, it's interesting because cryptocurrencies right now are quite volatile. So with a bond, you're really, you know, whereas with Viet, you're locking the value um, in dollars that you expect you know, obviously there's inflation, but you expect that it'll be basically the same. The thing with crypto is you're really locking that in, so it's the value will change, right? But you know, as I mentioned, um, bonds you can sell bonds, so they're not they're still somewhat liquid, right? Um, but you know, this platform would have to have a lot of traffic to really uh, provide that liquidity. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you look at the stock market, right? So the stock market is 76 trillion. Crypto is well over half a billion or half a trillion now. Um, so this is a bit old, but um, the, the actual the bond market, uh, which is primarily the global debt market, is actually 217 trillion. So it's a huge market, right? Um, and that's you know that's not to really say that we know what kind of a share crypto is going to get in the bond market, but um, you know the potential is definitely there. Um, so basically, Labris is going to build this platform. Um, it's going to build a wallet, uh, so the Labris wallet. It's going to issue a Lab token. Um, the first thing it's going to do is buy a variety of bonds to add to its portfolio um, and to allow other investors, basically to offer to investors um, to invest in. Uh, eventually, they plan to build an actual infrastructure for companies to directly issue the bonds on the platform. Um, but that's down the road if you look at their, um, at their roadmap. Uh, so, just pull it up here. So there's the wallet. Um, and so the soft caps 10 million, hard caps uh, 30 million. And they do mention so that there's a soft cap of 10 million, but um, I'm not sure they, I'm not sure it really specifies if they don't reach it. Yeah, so all capital raised during the soft cap will go towards purchasing more bonds to improve the liquidity of the platform. So if they don't reach the 10 million, uh, it will be refunded, right? So that's good. I think in my first, uh, my first look through, I didn't really notice that they had that. Okay, so basically, um, in a nutshell, the benefits of, of what they're trying to do here is that for crypto investors, uh, you'll be able to enter the passive uh, fixed income markets through bonds, um, and you won't have to actually exit the crypto markets. So you can be earning passive income, investing your cryptocurrency um, in bonds, and you, there's still, you know, ideally there's still some liquidity there. Um, so you can still s sell that cryptocurrency um, and <clears throat> sell the entire package bond um, if you need to. And then for the traditional markets, there's also a benefit because you're getting, uh, you know, you're you're basically simplifying the bond issuance process, right? And so you can look through their white paper; they they actually go through the entire process, um, and it's a pretty good uh, synopsis of it. Um, and they go through what bond markets, what bonds are, and probably explain it better than I did. Um, but, you know, basically this is a process that takes days or weeks, um, and they're essentially making that process able to happen a lot faster, right? In the same way Bitcoin allows transactions to happen a lot faster than banks do with wire transfers, especially globally, right? Um, that's where a huge advantage of Bitcoin is, is it's a global currency. Um, and it's also, you know, there's a, using the Ethereum blockchain, um, you have a transparent immutable ledger uh, and proof of ownership uh, for these bonds, right? And so that's part of what simplifies the whole process. <coughs> so I'll just get into what I like about this project, um, some of the token metrics, um, and then kind of the red flags for this project. Um, so they're, <coughs> they're issuing uh, a large, Oh, this is annoying. 
they're issuing a very large uh, proportion of the total lab tokens in the crowd sale. Um, and the initial price is 10 cents. Um, and this supply, so that's the total supply, but unsold tokens will be burned, so they won't necessarily have this supply. Um, and burning unsold tokens is another thing I really like. So um, if you see an ICO that, that basically retains all the unsold tokens, then whatever percentage they're claiming to sell in the crowd sale isn't necessarily true, right? Um, so if they only sold two thirds of their tokens, then and they weren't burning the tokens, then they would only be really issuing 50% of their tokens and the company would be keeping the rest, right? And so when a company's burning unsold tokens, that's a really, uh, that's a really good structure um, to their ICO. They also have a $30 million cap, hard cap, a $10 million soft cap. Um, so that's another thing uh, with ICOs, you want them to, ha to have defined caps. Um, and 30 million is, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's, I'd say it's not too much, especially with what they're trying to do, right? So they need, when they release this, it has to have liquidity. There has to be a lot of interest and there has to be a lot of um, bonds available for people to use, already available on the platform for people to use it, right? And so they need to purchase those. Um, and right, that's the first part of their rollout is is just purchasing bonds and, and issuing or converting them, um, uh, putting them on the platform, right? So it's only down the road uh, that you're going to have company, companies come into the platform um, and actually issuing it through the platform themselves, right? And that makes sense because I don't think a lot of companies would, would really be interested if they're going to be the first person's person using or first company using the platform, um, you know, kind of being the guinea pig, right? And so by buying the bonds first, it's really a proof of concept for them. Um, but that also makes it a risky investment as an investor, right? Because if the platform's not successful, um, then you, know, you could lose a fair bit of value, right? Um, in, this, in the token and <coughs> uh, could lose money, right? Um, they also have a whitelist um, and there's a kind of an equitable max cap. So in the first 24 hours, um, basically they're gonna take everyone who's on the whitelist and uh, take the, the cap or the total number of tokens, divide it by that, uh, by the number of people, and then that's the maximum value you can contribute for the first 24 hours. So as long as you log in, as long as you're there to buy in the first 24 hours, if you're on the whitelist, you're guaranteed to be able to participate. Um, and so I think that's good as well, right? It prevents whales from just picking up, um, you know, buying all of the tokens, right? Um, unfortunately, you know, really the positives for this and there, right? Like, I think this project is a really good idea. I think it has a huge potential, but I also think it's extremely risky um, because they really have no, uh, no, no product right now, right? They have no prototype. They have no alpha prototype. They have no code. Um, and I don't think they're, this is actually an open source project anyways. Um, and the team, the, the team's just okay. Um, you know, this, this guy, they all have experience, you know, they all have pretty good industry experience, but there's not a lot of blockchain experience. Um, and this guy, Lachlan Feeney, he's the CTO, um, and he has some dev experience, but not really any uh, blockchain dev experience, uh, so to speak. Um, so if you pull up his LinkedIn here. So the other thing, so his only real blockchain experience is as a developer um, for the Civic Ledger company, but this is something he just, he just started at in 2017, and he's actually still working there, right? So he's really working on Labris part time. Um, so unfortunately, you know, this is, and some of the some of the uh, some of the team doesn't even actually uh, list Labris on their LinkedIn at all. Um, so I mean, really, this is at this point, this is a white paper ICO, right? They're trying to invest a whole bunch of money, and then they're going to do the development, right? And that's not—I don't think that's that's really a good sign of a committed team, right? They haven't already put in their own time before they raise any money or value. They haven't put in their own time um, to build a product, right? And you know, I almost think that's you know, this is the kind of thing where I think they should have gone uh, and and raised some funds internally or. Um, through you know an investor, um, obviously not 30 million, but a bit of upfront cost um, 
to basically develop uh, an initial prototype. Um, and so this is really risky at this point. Um, and so I really, I wouldn't recommend investing this right now. Um, but I mean, it's a really good idea and there's not, there's not a lot of other projects that are, that are really looking at bonds specifically. Um, and it is a huge market, right? So if they did, <coughs> if they did capture some of this market, I mean, the potential upside could be huge. Um, another project that's actually similar that I did invest in is Decorp. Um, so they're basically trying to, a similar idea, they're trying to democratize venture capital. Um, and that would include, you know, part of that would include the potential for them to, uh, to look at bonds. Um, but yeah, like I, s I, I could see these two companies actually partnering together in a sense. Um, but, you know, this one when I invested, it actually had, uh, it didn't have a full MVP, but it did have, um, you know, a platform already built. Um, and I didn't put a lot in, you know, I, I even this I saw was a bit risky. Um, but yeah, so that's dcorp.it, so you can go and check that out if you're interested. Um, so I've done a full due diligence for this project um, on Concourse uh, Q. So this is basically an, uh, one of the newer kind of rating sites, um, and it's more focused on community due diligence. Um, sorry, I'm on the wrong one here. Uh, so you can check out ConcourseQ.io. Uh, I'll post a link actually to this uh, in my video description. Um, this is all the met some of the metrics I talked about. Um, sales schedule, just some of the kind of main points of the project, and just a synopsis of each team member as well. Um, so if you're interested in learning a bit more. Um, otherwise, that's about it. I wanted to keep this under 10 minutes, just a quick review. Um, overall, I would not recommend investing in this ICO, but, you know, that being said, you know, there's no right answer, and this is only my opinion, and so it's ultimately your decision.